Hello, my name's Gabe and it's time for another Hawkeye Tech Tutorial. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to install a transom mount transducer. The transom mount transducer is suitable for outboard, inboard outboard, single inboard, or jet drive propelled vessels. The whole dead rise angle must be below 30 degrees and the transom dead rise should be between 3 and 20 degrees. If you think that this transducer is not suitable for your vessel, contact us. We'll be happy to review your installation plan and offer suggestions for alternative transducer options. Let's begin by unpacking and reviewing the contents of the packaging. In the package, there should be a transducer with attached harness, a support bracket, a kick-up bracket, two tapered shims, two cable clamps, a clamshell cable cover, two number 10 self-tapping screws, and four number six self-tapping screws. If you do not have any of these items, please contact support at norcrossmarine.com and we will rush one out to you. The tools required for this installation are a power drill, a 5 8 inch drill bit, an 8 inch drill bit, a 9 64 inch drill bit, marine seal and a caulk, a screwdriver, a marker, zip ties, cleanup rags, and a solvent. If you're going to be storing the vessel in the water, you'll also need water-based anti-fouling paint and masking tape. Now let's get started. The first step is to choose a mounting location. To obtain the best performance, the transducer should be mounted in a location where the water flow beneath the hull is aeration and turbulence free. Try to mount the transducer as close to the center line of the boat as possible. To get a good view of the mounting location, with the vessel out of the water, Position yourself at the transom and look at the bottom of the hull towards the bow. Using the illustrations in the manual, note anything that could interrupt the clean flow of water to the transducer mounting location. Once the desired location is determined, mark it with an X using your pencil. After selecting the mounting location, let's assemble the transom mount bracket. With the locking tab in the up position, align the transducer and bracket. Then slide the transducer into the pivot bracket until it cannot slide any further. Press the locking tab down against the pivot bracket until it locks firmly into place. Then slide the pivot bracket arms through the back of the screw bracket as pictured. Grasp the transducer in your hand like this, rest the screw bracket against the solid object like the swim platform, and press the pivot bracket into the screw bracket with enough force until it snaps into place. Next, locate the transom template inserted in the operator's manual. At the desired mounting location, previously marked with an X, position the template so the arrow at the bottom is aligned with the bottom edge of the vessel, making certain that the template is parallel to the waterline of the vessel. Affix the template to the hole with tape. Using a 9 64 inch 4 mm drill bit, drill two holes 7 8 of an inch deep at the locations indicated on the template marked with an X. The bracket is designed for a standard 13 degree transom angle. To determine if the plastic shim is needed, position the transducer at the desired location. Using a straight edge, compare the underside of the transducer relative to the underside of the hull. The stern or trailing edge of the transducer should be about 1 16th to 1 8th of an inch below the bow or leading edge of the sensor. Apply a marine sealant to the threads of the two number 10 one and a quarter inch self-tapping screws and screw the bracket to the hole. Do not tighten the screws completely until you position the transducer. It's very important not to allow the leading edge of the transducer to extend more than an eighth of an inch below the bottom of the boat as this will create increased aeration and turbulence. Now tighten the transducer screws. Now, route the transducer cable over the transom through a deck or splash well drain hole or through a new hole drilled in the transom. If a new hole is required, follow the instructions in the manual. Remember, it must be drilled well above the water line. Finally, route the cable through the display mounting location and connect it to the display. Something to keep in mind is that to prevent damage to the transducer, it will automatically release from the mounting bracket or kick up when it is impacted. If three dash readings are the only readings that are displayed, check to make sure that the transducer is not kicked up. Most likely you'll have to remove the vessel from the water to check it and reset it. If this happens frequently, make sure that the trailer or boat lift bunks do not interfere with the transducer during loading and unloading. If this is the case, you'll need to either move the transducer or adjust your trailer or boat lift bunks. Now that you've installed the transducer, 
allow sufficient drying time for the sealants, and learned the setup and basic functions of the depth finder. Let's get out on the water and put it to work. If random three dash readings occur, have someone run the boat on plane for you in smooth water. Now carefully look over the transom at the water flowing from the bottom of the boat over the base of the transducer. The water should be dark in color, referred to as clean, with very little turbulence or air bubbles. If there are any air bub bubbles or turbulence seen passing underneath the transducer, move the transducer farther down on the transom bracket. If the performance does not improve, move the transducer to clean water, making sure to fill any unused screw holes with marine sealant. One final note. High speed performance of the depth sounder may require extensive adjustment and testing to find the best transducer mounting location. This transducer has been tested to perform up to 60 miles an hour. Not all boat hull configurations will allow for this type of performance. If you are not satisfied with the performance of the depth sounder, it is recommended that you seek the advice of a professional marine electronics installer. If you are not happy with the on water performance of your depth sounder, we are here to help. Rest assured that this depth sounder is engineered to the highest standards and is part of the best selling family of depth sounders in the world. It is highly likely that your dissatisfaction is due to improper installation. Nine times out of ten, performance issues are the result of improper installation of the transducer. I cannot stress enough, the transducer must be mounted so that it has an uninterrupted supply of clean, aeration-free water. If the depth finder gives accurate readings while the vessel is sitting still, but changes to dash lines while the vessel is moving, it is almost always the result of aeration to the transducer face. In this case, you should review the transducer installation guide and adjust the transducer as suggested. Thanks again for purchasing a Hawkeye Depth Finder. Here at Norcross Marine Products, we strive for 100% customer satisfaction. If you have a problem with your depth sounder, first review the operator's manual, then rewatch this video. If you can't find a solution to the problem, feel free to call us at 888-7-NORCROSS during normal business hours. 24-hour technical support is available online at hawkeyeelectronics.com where you can search our online knowledge base for the latest troubleshooting and FAQs or post your own question for our support staff. For one-on-one -on -one support, please email support at norcrossmarine.com. Now get out there and enjoy your freedom.